Vancouver 24 Hours columnist Bill Thieleman joins us now, also from Vancouver. And uh, Bill, uh, give me your sense. You're on the ground there at, you know, this is what, day two, three of uh, both sides, uh, either attacking the budget or selling the budget. And uh, where's the battle lines being drawn? Well, as Jill just reported, David, the real challenging thing for Christy Clark and Mike DeYoung, the finance minister, is that the business community is offside. They're not jumping up and down. They're not screaming and yelling. But they've made it very clear in quote after quote that they're not happy. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce said there's a lack of reality here. The Business Council said there, wasn't a, there was no recognition that BC isn't competitive enough. And they're very unhappy to see a tax increase. And, of course, the whole Liberal brand has been and has said uh, that tax cuts pay for themselves. You don't need to increase taxes. You cut taxes and you make more money. Well, they finally figured out that isn't working. And the only way they can possibly come close to balancing the budget is with a tax increase on both corporations and uh, wealthier income British Columbians. Um, certainly wealthier income British Columbians will vote, or presumably they will in this election. Businesses don't have a vote, and that's why sometimes politicians like to jump up the taxes on businesses. Uh, but all British Columbians pay the MSP, the Medical Services Plan. I hope I got that right. Uh, mm -hmm. The equivalent to OHIP here in Ontario or something along those lines. Uh, those are going up, and uh, my sense is that could be something that really perhaps bites the Liberals more than anything else. Yeah, well, we've had three years of uh, premiums going up every year, David. They're going up another 4%. And there's just a whole host of different things that have gone up over the past while. So it's a very difficult situation for the government. It's really not the kind of budget you want to run in an election on where you're saying, well, pay more money, we'll increase taxes, but vote for us anyway. And there's also some serious cuts coming to social services. Adults with disabilities, for example, are going to have a very serious, tough time with this budget. That story is just starting to come out now and community groups that are concerned about that are, are raising the alarm there. So it, it, it looks like it's going to be a difficult time and certainly not something that the Liberals are going to campaign on. When you've got your allies, usually the business community comes out after a budget from the BC Liberals and say this is a great job, an A-plus job. This year they're, they're not applauding, they're saying this isn't very good and that's not what you usually get and especially not what you want in an election year. Uh, the B.C. Conservatives, there's certainly now a lot of room on the right side of the spectrum for them as John Cummins' group. But uh, I would suggest, uh, no disrespect to the B.C. Conservatives, John Cummins, they may have some trouble with campaign machinery, with the ability to harness and take advantage of the space that is now opened up there. Could the business community be jumping in here with some money and moral support? Well, that's certainly what the Conservatives want and John Cummins wants. They're going to try and do that. And, you know, it, it is ironic because it's sort of like a, a, a race car sitting there on blocks with no wheels on it. They, yeah. they don't have the ability to get the rubber on the road. And they're the one party that's saying right now we wouldn't do a corporate tax increase. We wouldn't do this. We wouldn't do that. That the Liberals first denounced the NDP for suggesting, mildly suggesting earlier in the year. And they've now actually done in their own budget. So that does leave a, a huge gap as large as a Mack truck for the Conservatives, but I don't know if they'll be able to get a lot of traction on it because they can't really, they don't have the ability to get a lot of people on the ground and door knocking and all the, the advertising really is what you need in these campaigns. But that said, it can only help them and hurt the Liberals. Uh, one of the things Jill mentioned in a report was talking about this budget as the key ballot box issue in May. What's your thoughts about that? Would the NDP be happy to have this be the ballot box issue? Would the Liberals be happy to have this budget be the ballot box issue? Well, I think you could just tell from A, as I mentioned, the Business Council and other responses from the business community, and B, the attitude of Adrian Dix in the legislature the last two days. He's been effervescent with this. He's been having a lot of fun with it because he knows it's not good for them, and he knows that he, they've taken the, the whole tax issue away. Uh, Martin Brown, Gordon Campbell, our former Premier's chief of staff, has been uh, absolutely ripping the Liberals on this one. He said, basically, you, you handed the NDP the tax issue before an election. It's crazy. And so I suspect this can be very difficult. I think the economy, though, as opposed to the budget itself, David, the economy is the question. Christy Clark trying to regain some of the Liberals' lost ground on, on having sort of a commanding heights view that they are the, re the best for the economy in difficult times or otherwise. But all the polling has recently shown that Adrian Dix still has the lead there as well. Uh, and if these health care issues, health care funding becomes an issue, then they're going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, uh, Bill Tielemann in Vancouver tonight, Vancouver 24 Hours columnist. Thank you so much. Thanks, David. All right. Now, we've got NDP finance critic Bruce Ralston on the phone for his reaction to the Liberal budget. It's the first chance we've had to chat with Bruce. I know it's been a busy couple of days, Bruce. Uh, let me just perhaps put the same question to you that I just put to Bill Tielemann a minute ago and, and ask you whether for New Democrats, um, is this a good ballot box issue? This budget, uh, would you like uh, British Columbians to vote on it? And would that be good news for your party? 
Well, we see this budget as a bogus budget, very reminiscent of a budget that they tabled uh, before, just before the 2009 election here in British Columbia. And in that election, just to give a little bit of history, where uh, they mentioned uh, nothing about the HST. They, in fact, promised in writing they wouldn't do it. And the f first day after the uh, election, the Premier was uh, already uh, deciding to bring in the HST. So. So there's not a lot of trust. There's not a lot of credibility. There, there. We got a leaked document from the Liberal Caucus that said they were going to spend four million dollars on public advertising of the budget to help uh, close their credibility gap. And I'm quoting from the document there. So they, mm -hmm. they know they've got a problem. They're hoping that this budget will help them. Uh, I don't think it uh, it fulfills their political needs, but it is an eminently political document. Uh, let me ask you to walk us through some of the uh, stuff that's happening in the legislature so far as the budget goes and also a supply bill. And for those not into parliamentarian ease, uh, a supply bill essentially is a bill that gives the government the authority to spend money. And I understand you in the legislature, you're going to see that supply bill, but you may not see the budget before the election. Well, it's certainly it's up to the, the Minister of Finance is conveniently for them, also the government house leader, so he's in charge of the process. And uh, typically, uh, a budget uh, will go to uh, a vote at the end of the budget debate, and then uh, that would, and the vote would be to go into committee of supply, which is where then each minister comes before a committee and is questioned on their what are called estimates in that committee. Um, the but the interim supply motion is one that gives the government in the absence of passing the budget because the budget won't be passed before we break for the election that's sort of how it works here given the shortened session and the imminent election the interim supply gives the government the authority to continue spending money and uh, they have to uh, have that pass and and uh, and that, that's uh, something that I think all members would support I'm no one uh, here uh, at least I don't speak for the uh, I mean, uh, speaking only for our side, no one uh, here uh, would want to shut down the government uh, while the election was going on. Uh, but you'd like, would you like to see some decent budget debate, at least, if not a vote, before the well, election? Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of budget debate, and certainly uh, uh, I think I just uh, heard Bill Thielman talking about question period. Uh, our, our Adrian Dix was uh, hammering away at uh, the government's bogus budget yesterday, and uh, and uh, I think we're uh, we're winning that uh, that war. Although it's uh, when they've got four million bucks in public money to advertise it, uh, it makes it uh, a challenging contest. All right, Bruce Ralston, the BC NDP finance critic. Thank you so much, Bruce.